and welcome to my favourites video of 2012. I um, basically wanted to do a selection of favourites that I've had um, during the last year and hopefully you will like them too. So the first thing I'm going to talk about are movies that I enjoyed in 2012. So I've got quite a long list. <laughs> um, the Avengers. Mm -hmm. Prometheus I thought was amazing. Um, I hadn't seen all the Alien stuff, even though it's not a prequel to Alien, even though it blatantly is. Um, well, no, it isn't. I don't know. But it seemed very much like a prequel to Alien. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I just really, really enjoyed it. Um, my boy, well, fiancé, um, introduced me to the Alien um, universe, I guess. And um, I really enjoyed them. And Prometheus was also fantastic. And Michael Fassbender it was just my favourite character in the whole thing. It was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Rock of Ages. <laughs> um, because it was so sort of cheesy, but then Tom Cruise was absolutely brilliant. I just really enjoyed it. I, and I like musicals, so. Ted. <laughs> oh, Ted. Seth MacFarlane is just pure genius. The Dark Knight Rises. Just because. Total Recall. Now, <laughs> I've heard people say that they prefer the original, that it's not as good, the as in the remake wasn't as good, but I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I thought the effects were great, I thought the direction was great, it reminded me of Minority Report, but it was still really, it was just, I really, really enjoyed it. And um, Colin Farrell, again, I thought it was amazing. Premium Rush, oh my god, I really, really like it, but I do love Joseph Gordon-Levitt, so, um, you know, I'm kind of biased. Looper, again, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Oh my god. Probably my favourite film of the year, actually. I was looking for it, as soon as I saw the trailer for it, I was like, I need this in my life, I need to see this movie. And I absolutely loved it. I was just like, the whole time. And my head, oh, I always get confused with time travel type um, movies. And I still got confused with this, but I still really, really enjoyed it. So, um, yeah, and the makeup and you know all the sort of costume and everything like that just phenomenal really really good Skyfall um, partly because of the experience we went into the director's lounge type thing at our local cinema so it was all posh so that I kind of added to the um, excitement but also um, the film generally was really good I hadn't seen at that time now I'm watching all the Bonds but at the time I hadn't seen, really seen that many Bonds and so I wasn't a massive like hardcore Bond fan but even I enjoyed it um, and it was just it felt like a nice kind of 50th anniversary type film <laughs> it was really good the most recent one I saw in 2012 was The Hobbit um, I loved Lord of the Rings I love Peter Jackson I love Martin Freeman in it oh my god I just he is fantastic Martin Freeman is great so I, I've always liked him I've liked him since I saw him in the office and um, Pretty much anything that he's in I just love. So when I saw that he was Bilbo I was very excited. I did try and read the book in school and failed miserably at the point where he kind of introduced to all the dwarves and I, I kind of completely lost track of who was who and it kind of threw me off. But um, the film obviously it always makes it easier when you're seeing things. Um, I might give the book another go now that I have images in my head. I know it's the wrong way around but it might help me <laughs> read it. So I'd like to probably read the book before the next instalment of The Hobbit comes out. I don't even know when that is. I'm guessing it's this year. and Maybe it's next year. I don't know. The other thing I've been watching recently is pretty much just Netflix. Um, we had, I think we got it last year. And we've just been watching, um, well, we watched Lost the entirety. Entirety? Entirety? Mm. All of Lost. <laughs> And um, we watched series one to three of 24 on Netflix and it was friggin' awesome. Um, so now we're having a pause from 24 because it is quite intense because it's obviously so slow. But yeah. The other thing TV wise is Red Dwarf. It came out on TV last year and um, I got this for Christmas. And seriously, Red Dwarf. I love Red Dwarf so much. I loved the, no, I, I, since I can remember, I've just watched Red Dwarf and when I saw that this was coming out, I was just like, <laughs> oh my god. Um, 
and it felt exactly the same as the old series. Yeah, I was kind of worried that it looked really kind of shit, to be honest. But it doesn't. It well, I personally think it's like the old stuff. It's like the old star stuff. And obviously, yes, they're older, and there's a big gap in plot as to what happened between the end of the you know the eighth series. We kind of skip past series nine, back to earth, and um, yeah, I want them to like miss like fill in that gap because I don't understand how. I just don't understand how rumours... It doesn't matter. I'm not going to ramble on, but Red Dwarf. I'm going to turn my page. So that takes me to music. Um, the These albums, I think, are actually older than 2012, but this is when I've listened to them. And I only have two, because I tend to listen to the same music over and over again. So these are the only two that I've... Um, again, like I say, they're sort of older. I think these albums were older, but... I discovered them in 2012, so technically that's falling into my 2012 favourites. Um, the first one is Twin Atlantic, um, the album's called Free, listen to it when we're on holiday and just love it. I love the fact that they've got that nice strong Scottish accent the whole way through the whole album. Um, one of my friends doesn't like accents in like in singing, but I love it, especially Scottish, because it's my like one of my favourite accents. So, and the album, I think, was just, it's a nice mix of sort of slower stuff, and then you got kind of more sort of, I won't say dramatic, it's already dramatic, but like much more kind of intense stuff, and a bit more fast paced, and no, it's a really nice sort of mix of an album, and the same actually goes for the other album I like, which is um, The Glorious Dead by The Heavy. Um, you may have heard one of their songs on the trailer, or well, the advert for Borderlands 2, or was it Borderlands the first one. I can't remember now, but my fiance showed me and um yeah, he downloaded the album and then I listened to it and I was just completely hooked. Again, it's just a nice mix of a lot of different influence. You can hear the influences in all these songs. The whole album is kind of like a mashup of lots of different genres and um it's just a really nice kind of you can either have it as like a feature where kind of everyone listens to it or you can have it in the background. It's one of them where it could be like anything so it's a really good album I highly recommend moving on to fitness stuff um, so the big thing I did in 2012 was Zumba Accelerate this was pretty much my total um, fitness package oh I've missed one <laughs> there's one missing I don't know where that is the rush one the, like the um, 20 minute workout is missing um, but I liked this I had Zumba Fitness uh, two or three years ago two years ago three years ago some time um which was great but it was quite limited so then when i saw zumba exhilarate i was like oh yeah because there was a much more there were more um discs there was more kind of a uh, sort of it was a bit more different um well the only thing i didn't like about it was um the live where is it the fitness concert is pretty much just exactly the same routine as exhilarate now I thought it was going to be like completely different again, like an extra type of workout, but it was just pretty much copying exactly the same as the Exhilarate disc, just with a live audience. So it kind of annoyed me, but other than that, I really like the, the um, this DVD, um, and I love the fact that it's in like a big huge giant thing. Aww. I just I love it. So um, yeah, so I'll always love Zumba. It's the first thing that kind of got me in, back in, well, I say back into fitness. That got me into fitness in the first place, um, and it'd be one of them that, you know, the old faithful, I'll always go back to it, so that's that. The other thing with regards to fitness in 2012 was my awesome uh, present from my then boyfriend, now fiancé, I keep saying it, I'm really sorry, but I'm too excited, um, was my Polar um, FT4 watch, which is, um, it comes with like a heart rate monitor, so you've got the band thing. So you obviously put that around your chest and this is the actual um, thing, the oh, wear link, <laughs> which basically I'm assuming is a teeny tiny computer thingy, whatever, and it picks up your heart rate and then it transmits it to your watch so you can record it all. And I love it because once that's on you can't feel it, the amount of times I've gone for a shower and realised I've still got it on. Um, but also I love the fact that you can you can get more recent models than this but I like this one just because it's 
quite simple. Um, although I've heard the other ones are really simple as well, but I just like this one. Um, and you can store, I can't remember how many days it is, one, two, three, four, nine days worth of data. So I, if I wanted to know what I did, how many calories I burned yesterday, I could just go along 7th of the 1st, which was yesterday, I burned 498 calories. And then back, and then today, 161. Um, so I really, 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 really love this, and I really, 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 really recommend it. I know it's at work because I use my um, my fitness pal, which again is also one of my favourites. Um, it's an online. Well, you can have it on. You, know, you can have have it on, like just the internet on your laptop, or you can have it on your phone as an app. And um, I love it. And you can obviously put in. You can put in how much you eat, like the calorie, like what you eat, and it calculates the calories, and also. Um, how much exercise you do and you know your net calories for the day um, and I noticed that when I recorded my calories using my heart rate monitor it was very similar to the calories that my fitness pal kind of spout out you know you put in your number of minutes um, exercise and what it is and it, it's pretty it's pretty similar so um, I was quite pleased with that now Technically, this is 2012, but I've only started it in 2013. So I got it in 2012, but I'm still going to show you, even though I've only just done it this year. I pretty much just want to show anyone Turbo Fire. And seriously, this is a this is a nice selection of DVDs. I love it. I love it. it's in a nice compact little box. Well, book. It's like a book. Love it. I've lost it. Hold on. <laughs> it is in here. No, it's not. It's not in here. It's in here. <laughs> this is from too many zips. <laughs> Mac. This was Christmas presents from my future mother-in-law. <laughs> uh, one is the Mac Studio Sculpt. Uh, hold on. Scu can't speak. Studio Sculpt Foundation. SPF 15 in NC 15 which I think is a bit too pale because I put it on and I look like Casper um, but I still really really like the coverage but the thing that I love even more is the MAC Prep and Prime um, finishing powder um, it's pressed but um, I use my e.l.f. giant brush total face brush face? my total face brush to use it. I just kind of literally swirl and then dab. And obviously it's transparent so you're not going to see anything. But it just um, gets with the shine and um, it just seems to keep my makeup on better. Um, I mean I never find a... I, I don't think I ever find a makeup that just stays on my face forever. Well, you know, until you take it off. I don't think that, that my skin doesn't seem to work with anything like that, but it does last longer than usual. So that I love. Um, the other thing was I've got this again. This is an old product, but I've enjoyed it in 2012. So I'm showing it to you. You probably we well, might not be able to get it anymore, but in that case, I'm just gonna be mean and show you. Um, when I do my hair curling, I use this. It's the, uh, it's basically this bit, but it comes in loads of different. Um, attachments <laughs> um, so this one is the curling one really easy to use um, so obviously when, it, when it's on the lights on and then um, it's got the little thing to hold the hair and I'll literally go from put the end take a strand put the end in the bottom and then just curl it and sit there for like 10 seconds and then let go and it's ringlet um, and then I'll kind of pull it out a bit so it's not as ringlety or if I want to keep really tight ringlets I'll obviously leave it. Um, I love this, it's the Philips Geometrics, I don't know if you can even get that anymore, it's, I think it was, it may have been my mum's <laughs> um, but I, that's the, what I use for my curling my hair but you could probably get the same thing with from a curling wand, um, I just use that because I've got it. I almost got a curling wand for Christmas but um, I thought well that does the job and until that breaks I'm not going to get people to spend money on me that they don't need to. 
Um, other miscellaneous things that I really enjoy, um, this one was Christmas present. What is it, you ask? Well, I shall show you, I tell you. Pair of glasses. Oh wait, I can't do it from this side. It's a glasses holder, because I never, I always, bad habit of mine, I put glasses just on the arm of the sofa, and then they fall on the floor or into the sofa, or it's just a nightmare, I'll stand on them or whatever. So this is a nice little thing to kind of, <laughs> to kind of, um, I love it. Uh, yeah, something that's kind of quirky and kind of cute. I don't know where she got it from. Um, but my fiancé has a duck version as well. And it's just really good. I'm going to put that back on over there. Um, so yeah, that was one thing I would say. You could probably Google glasses holder and you could probably get loads of random designs. But I just, I'd never seen it before. Um, I'm probably not the last person to ever get one, but it was just really cute. The other Christmas present that I got, again, this is technically 2012. Um, now, where did she get these from? This was from Chris's Nan. The most cutest slippers I've ever owned in my life. And they're really nice and warm because they're all like fur in the inside. Um, but seriously, I just, they're so, so cute. They're all slippers seem to be big for me. I don't know whether it's just a stretch or what. So I have to wear big chunky socks with these as well. But actually I, I quite like that. Because um, again I'm all like snuggled up. So I just I absolutely love these. And I love the stars and I love the fact that I wouldn't have usually gone for a white pair. But I really like them. Um, usually because they get grubby. That's why I don't tend to buy white. But yeah I just really 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 love these. Um, so yeah. And um, something similar to them but more for the outdoors. Um, is my bargain boot. Um, I love, I hadn't really, I got some knee length boots year before last I think um, from Clark's and they were very expensive but they're really really nice, proper, real leather sort of thing. And I wanted like a black pair of boots but didn't really want to spend a lot of money. So I went to Asda, <laughs> Georgia Asda and I bought these boots and they're really nice, they're quite soft material, they only probably come up to just a bit, like some mid well, yeah, mid calf. <laughs> let's check. Um, because I've got quite little legs, you see. So that actually goes up to my mid calf. It's quite depressing. Um, and yeah, just a little heel, nothing too big. Um, again, because my feet are just ridiculous, I have to wear a um, big pair of socks. But it, like I say, when it's this kind of weather, when it's all cold, I quite enjoy wearing boots with massive chunky socks. Um, just I don't know why it must just be. I don't know. It's just comfy. <laughs> I think that's it, finally, after all my rambling. <laughs> Sorry. If you have any favourites of your own from last year, 2012, um, please do a video. I'd like to see your favourites. Um, I know Redhead Mare does hers all the time. Um, I say all the time. She does lots of favourites. I think she does monthly ones in different like types, like different categories, like with like beauty or whatever. Um, and so I thought I'd do one as well. Um, not very interesting, and um, most of it was taken up by rambling about movies, but, um, oh well. <laughs> Bye!